Hello, my creepy pupils. Welcome to Creepy Corners. <laughs> I'm laughing because I had started this. I wanted to use my good microphone and my good camera this time, and I realized I wasn't recording on the good microphone. So here we are. <clears throat> so this week I wanted to do a little something different, and I, I feel like I might call it jammy talk or couch chat or so, I don't know, something like that. Creepy conversations. So I think somebody said that to me one time in the past that I should call it creepy conversations. Anyway, um, and I just want to, I'm picking a, a topic that's been on my mind a lot lately and you'll find out why. Um, and I just want to talk about it with you and get your thoughts on it and, you know, have a conversation or whatever. But the topic is friends and the type of friend that I am and the type of friend that you are and things like that. And I, I'm, I'm really curious <clears throat> to get your input. And I've, I've been awake for maybe, I don't know, an hour and I'm still a little bit, uh, sound and sleepy. Um, I also have a little bit of coffee and I've got my vape here. So that's probably going to happen while we're having this conversation. And I thought about, you know, writing everything down and going through a list and stuff, but Let's see how it goes if I just talk about this stuff. Um, so I've had some things happen to me recently that made me really think about the type of friend that I am and the type of friends that I have. And one of the things, let's go back to me being a kid. So my parents divorced right around when I was about two or so. And... Um, I don't remember anything from that time, really. I, I know um, I I, le I went with my mom, of course, as most kids do. And I remember being, you know, being around my mom, being around my dad, being around my granny a lot. She did a lot of raising of me and, and uh, I learned a lot from her, of course, but I always had my family as sort of my my main set of people that I was around. Um, and I was kind of the, I was sort of a, a strange kid in the fact that I spent most of my time up in trees and stuff and, uh, <laughs> you know, not really, I mean, I always had a friend a best friend, a sing a singular person. And I think we've, I've definitely talked about this before on here that I am a one person person. If, um, we're best friends and we're spending all our time together, then I'm probably not hanging out with anybody else. Um, if I'm in a relationship with you, then I'm with you and I'm focused on you and not everybody can handle that. I'll just, I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> Most people can't handle that. And um, so anyway, so my mom, when she got remarried, she remarried uh, and, and she, it was a Marine. He was a Marine. And of course, because of that, we, we moved around a lot. I mean, when I was four, we moved to Florida. Um, I, and I don't know, I think I've told you this too, but I grew up in Georgia mostly. Um, but when I was four to when I was eight, we were in Florida and then we moved to North Carolina and then, um, and then I wound up actually when I was eight, I moved back with my dad <clears throat> and my dad who, you know, I, we moved around a, a little bit. We, you know, we had a couple different places that we lived. Um, but I never really, I guess my point is in saying what I'm saying is that I never really had an opportunity to form that friendship with that person that lasted until now or that lasted into high school or whatever because I changed schools a lot, I changed towns a lot, I changed states a lot. So it wasn't like I had this best friend who was, you know, with me my whole life and, and that sort of stability for, from that perspective. But I can tell you this, I did have a best friend in Florida when I was between four and eight years old. Her name was Amy. I won't say her last name, but I do remember it. And I can tell you right now, if I saw her, if I, if we got reunited somehow, I would, I feel like I would just immediately, 
I don't know. I, I definitely wouldn't recognize her, I'm sure. Um, I, we're obviously very young. But I feel like we would have that connection still. Or I would have that connection. Let me be clear. I would have that connection. So um, I'm also the type of person, and I, I know you've probably seen the memes and stuff about how, um, you know, there you there are certain people who no matter how much time goes by between the time that you talk to him last and stuff like that, that they'll still be, you kind of can pick up where you left off. And I felt, I have felt that way about several people throughout my life and maybe not Amy. I mean, that was definitely, <laughs> we were little kids. So, um, but, but people in my adulthood that I have formed what I thought were bonds with, um, that I can, that I know, or I feel like, if we if we wound up being you know um separated for a long time not talking for a long time that we could just pick up where we left off and i've had it happen many times so so that kind of brings me to what's happened to me recently and there's been a couple of things that have really weighed on me um, from the perspective of, I apparently romanticize all of my relationships and it's really been being smacking me in the face lately. So, um, you know, I, I'm sort of debating right now whether or not I should tell specific stories. I mean, these people may or may not watch my videos. I don't know. But I, I won't say any names, of course, and I won't get very detailed, but um, I'll, I'll be, I'll say, I'll tell you sort of what ha what the end result was um, and kind of the, build the relationship. Um, so get, here we go. Um, so one of my friends, uh, we, we were, we started, we met each other back in 2002 or so and have known each other you know, I have talked and I always thought that that person was this type of a friend where, you know, no matter how much time goes by, you can sort of pick up where you left off. And I thought that she felt the same way. I thought that we, we had that same idea of our friendship. Um, but I was wrong. I was very wrong. I was told I was wrong about it. Uh, I, I got a really long text from, from this person telling me how, um, cause I, I had, she was going, going through a hard time and I was telling her that I, you know, she was my best friend and that I loved her and I care about her and stuff like that. And, um, she told me that I was, that that wasn't right, that, you know, reality is we're not best friends and we haven't been for a long time and um that I abandoned her and when she needed me most and stuff like that and you know I appreciated the honesty and I told her that you know I, I do appreciate the honesty of course that wasn't just a smack in the face that was I basically got my ass kicked um <laughs> emotionally from that it changed my perspective on our friendship for sure and um it changed it, it's changed my perspective on a lot of my friendships that i thought you know that i i guess like i said like i romanticized what what they were about and now i'm sort of dealing with i'm sort of dealing with that and trying to come to terms with it trying to understand um what i how i could have been a better friend or something um, and I know you don't have full context, so it's kind of hard for you to say, oh, well, you could have done this or whatever, but, um, I don't know. I mean, it, I guess my point is it really hurt me and it really got me thinking. And then I've got these other friends and I mean, I kind of have that same sort of romantic notion in my head that with these, these two other people that. And, and each of these people were my person at a different point in my life, but I still love and care about them now and would be there for them. And there, I feel like they would be there for me. And 
I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so since that one major thing, because honestly, to me, this person was my best friend, period. I mean, I, and I, I have other really close friends and very good friends. And one who, I, I mean, th this the person that had sent me this big long text about how bad of a, a of a misconception I had about our friendship, that person I have known the longest. I've been through a lot with. Has she has she knows a lot of the stuff that I went through um, back then, and I feel like I know a lot of stuff about what she's been through and. Anyway, I, I won't, I'll try not to dwell on it too much because then I'll get upset. But um, I've got two other people who I consider also best friends in the fact that I feel very close to them. I care a lot about them. I, I would be there for them and I, you know, I, I miss them and, and I know that I've confided a lot in them and they've confided a lot in me. And um, I think of them as that type of a friend where no matter how much time passes, it's we could pick up where we left off and we have these two other people really have um you know played that sort of a, a part in my life where we've been there for each other no matter how much time passes between talking to each other <clears throat> so then i these those people are long-term friends that i've had for a while for at least 10 years well one of them at least 10 years. One of them, gosh, yeah, it's almost 10 years that she and I have known each other. And, uh, wow. <laughs> anyway. Um, so then flash forward to now and to another situation where I have this friend or who, so I thought was a friend that, well, actually, sorry, let me, let me back up just a little bit. Um, in my last job, uh, and I'm just going to put it out there. In my last job, I had people that I thought truly were friends and that I conf confided in very a lot. I mean, a lot about, <clears throat> you know, current stuff that was going on and bad things and good things. And we shared a lot of everything and, and, I, and I felt like they shared stuff with me too. Um, and I, I made a mistake. I made a huge mistake and I understand why I lost one of those people. And I, I it's kind of, it's not that big of a deal that I've had a lot of time to mull that one over. Um, <clears throat> the, the actions of that person were toxic and I, to me, she didn't and this is going to sound egotistical of me, but she didn't deserve me. Um, I, but, but I made a mistake with that person and I admit it. There's a lot that happened before that mistake that I made, but I did make a mistake. And because of that mistake, I found out about the other person and how they truly felt about me. And I lost that friend. She lost me pretty much immediately. So anyway, <laughs> So because of that situation, I decided that I was not going to get close to anybody I work with because I, and I also kind of decided I don't want to get close to anybody at all <laughs> because I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of, I, I don't want my feelings hurt anymore. I don't want to feel bad anymore. I mean, I, I understand that you can't be happy all the time and all that stuff. And that's fine. I don't expect that. But I don't want my to have my heart broken again by a friend or somebody I thought was a friend. As actually, there's another person that um, I. So anyway, let me let me continue down the path of the job thing. So I get to this new job four years ago, and I had decided at that point I wasn't going to get close to anybody because I don't want to have my heart broken again. And I wound up getting close to somebody. I mean, I do love people. That's part of the problem, I guess, <laughs> is that I really do love and care about people. And I got close to this person and she hurt my, she hurt me too. And, and 
I didn't even understand why all that happened. I didn't understand what I did. I still don't understand what I did. I mean, I, I, you, you start to think, what's the common denominator? If you have all these problems along the line, what's the common denominator? Well, it's me, right? I'm the one in the middle of all this. So where am I screwing up? What am I doing wrong to make these things happen? It's got to be me, right? It can't be that I just happened, sorry to bump the mic. It can't be that I just happened to find people who are going to screw me over or going to hurt me or going to make me feel bad or some right? Is that is that right? I I don't know. That's that's partly partially why I'm talking to you about this. Because I just I feel like I I feel like I am the reason <laughs> I mean and no I'm not very good about keeping in touch with people I'm just not I mean I get on Facebook I come on here and tell you everything that's going on with my life well not everything but I tell you things that are going on with my life you can see I'm here you can see I'm doing stuff you can see my house and my cat and whatever um so but I'm just not good at, at staying in touch and maybe that's the problem I don't know how I don't I don't have that thing in me that says reach out to so and so and whatever. I mean every now and then I'll send my friends a little heart or something to let them know I'm thinking about them, which I think about them all often. <laughs> I mean, I talk about them often. I tell stories and laugh about stuff and have really good romanticized memories about how things we did and how much fun it was and everything else. So and I, and I'm just saying I say romanticized because there was a, there's a lot of bad uh, stuff that happens too. But I think about all the good stuff is what I mean. <clears throat> so anyway, so I get hurt by this new person from my work, and I I think and again I think I'm not gonna let anybody else in. I'm not gonna do it because I'm sick and tired of getting hurt like this. And at this point, I'm not just sad, sad about it, but I'm mad about it too. Because I'm thinking, why do I continue to let myself get hurt by people? Why? Why? Well, so this this come forward to now, and I have this friend of mine who I'm thinking has been my best friend this whole time, and I'm told I was wrong, and I've come to accept that, and that's true, and it's absolutely true now. I'm not best friends with this person anymore. It's it's it just is. I was told it. I I read and reread and reread that text, and I realized, you know what? That's per perception is reality, and the fact that that person perceived that, then, and now I know about it, and I'm in on it, and I again I appreciate the the honesty, but it's it's taught me that you know I was wrong. <laughs> anyway, I I am definitely focused on that one just because that one probably hurt the worst. That one was kind of a punch me in the heart, like cave through my chest, rip my heart out and just squeeze it in front of me and laugh. You know, that was kind of that feeling. I don't, I don't know how that feels and hopefully I never do, but that's kind of what it made me think of. So anyway, uh, so I get to this new, this new workplace. I have this one person I thought was my friend and that all fell to shit. And then, um, I think I'm not going to let anybody else in because I'm tired of being hurt. Well, lo and behold, this another person decides that they're going to befriend me and ask me to go to dinner and stuff, which I really thought was a great. I was like, man, because at first I thought I just I don't want to do it because I don't want to get hurt again. And so I decided, though, you know what? Why not? I mean, what am I going to do? I'm going to am I going to sit around my house more? Am I going to just be? sit around here and be sad or something, which I'm not, but <laughs> you know, am I going to just sit around and, and whatever, watch TV or whatever, you know, so why not go out to dinner and just hang out? You know, I, I don't have to necessarily become close with the person. I can just hang out with the person and we can have fun and talk and stuff and talk about work stuff and whatever. And well, it got a lot deeper than that. We had a lot of conversations about relationships from the past and the present and I felt like we became really good friends. I felt bonded to this person from that perspective. Like you shared a lot of, sorry, I keep hitting the mic. You shared a lot of stuff with me. I shared a lot of stuff with you. I feel like we have a bond now of information, if nothing else, and we're friends. And all of a sudden, the last time we went to dinner, 
And we had gone to dinner a few times and had these conversations and talked about all these fun things and, and not so fun things. And, you know, n just knew, knew uh, I felt like a lot about each other that they normally wouldn't share. Probably they don't seem like the type of person that would just willy nilly share the, the information with it. Just anybody. I'm sort of more of an open book about stuff. So obviously, <laughs> but, um, so I, I think what I did, I think I took a joke a little bit too far with this person. I, that's my thought because honestly, I've been racking my brain to try to figure out what happened. But here's, here, here's some things. Now you are probably, my camera stopped recording. I wonder why. I mean, it's been 20 minutes. I guess it only films for 20 minutes. Um, so, so you're probably going to say, Claire, you're crazy. This, this was, you know, whatever, but here, here's the sequence of recent events with this. So I, I realize, well, I don't realize anything. I'm pretty oblivious to things. And I, I go to the floor where this person is, um, uh, because I have a meeting on that floor and I stop by and the, and the way that the person reacts to my presence is weird. It's not like it had been. It's not like, Hey, how you doing? Hadn't seen you, in a, you know, cause we hadn't seen each other in a few, whatever. I, I don't know, weeks, months. I don't, I don't know. I have no concept of time. <laughs> um, no, it wasn't that the reaction wasn't that the reaction was like, Oh, Hey, how's it going? I said, Oh, you know, it's going great. Um, you guys move their department moved to a different place on the floor. Well, yeah, we've been here for a couple months and I go a couple months. Really? I mean, again, I don't have any concept of time, so it could have been, it could have been a year. I don't, I don't know, but I realized that I wasn't wanted there. I felt unwanted and I thought maybe it's because they're busy. Maybe they have some work related thing going on. I, okay. So I go off and talk to somebody else and then I, I leave. Well, I text this person later. And I say, hey, is everything okay? Or were you just distracted or something? It seemed like you just had something going on. Oh yeah, everything's great. Oh, well, maybe not great. Uh, I, I think the answer was, yeah, everything's okay. So I was like, all right, well, cool. Well then, um, I don't remember if there was a time I don't remember if there was a time in between these two things, if there was something else that happened, because I, apparently I've already started blocking it out. But um, I ran into this person a little bit later, like a, a couple of days, well, again, the time thing. Let's call it a few days later. I ran into the person and I said, I said, hey, how's it going? Oh, good. I said, and then I, I realize again, there's this weird aura about how this person is reacting to me. And I say, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Are we okay? This is me. Are we okay? Oh yeah, we're okay. Okay. Well, can we go to dinner sometime? Um, yeah, well, we'll have to see. Now, please tell me, please tell me how you would react to that, how that would make you feel. Would you think something was going on? Would you, I mean, especially considering this person started out asking if you wanted to go to dinner and we, we went back and forth and, and I would pay one time and they would pay one time and, you know, it would be like a whole thing. So that's a question there for you. What would you think in that scenario that something was not right? That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking if you think that they were done with me or had problem with me, just would it seem like something wasn't right to you? So that's my first, that's the second thing that happened. The final thing that happened in my opinion <laughs> was on Facebook. Now let's talk about Facebook for a second because you know, I swore off Facebook for a while. I, I probably, I mean, it wasn't a long, long while. It was probably a good six months though, where I would check in, wish people a happy birthday and get back out of there as fast as I could <clears throat> because there are so, so much negativity from a political perspective and all that stuff. And I didn't want 
I don't want to deal with it. So I stopped Facebooking for a while. And again, not hardcore. Like I didn't stop 100%. But anyway. Um, well, this person and I, the one that I was just talking about, we were Facebook friends. We're not Facebook friends now. But we were Facebook friends. And um, they posted a um, something about uh, their pet's birthday. And I was on Facebook. This was on July 4th. I was on Facebook all day that day. I was jumping in and out and say and like looking for people's picnic pictures or cookout pictures and you know just pretty standard Fourth of or Facebook stuff where you just scroll through and you see people partying and whatever and you like it or whatever. Well, I saw this post and I said I said happy birthday to the pet. Later on that evening. I got the notification that the person had liked the little blue like had liked my thing that I said, my comment. I was probably driving you crazy with that coffee, huh? And for some reason, and I don't know what it was, I decided I was going to go and look and see the other comments and how that person reacted to those other comments. Now, on one hand, I guess I could consider that a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't have done that because it wouldn't have hurt my feelings as much as it did. Um, but on the other hand, I see it as the final straw, the third strike, the last thing, the whatever you want to say. So I look at this string of comments telling this pet happy birthday and all this other stuff. And every single response that they got, they put the little heart symbol on, except for mine. Now, tell me, please, that I am just crazy, that I just am reading way too much into it, that I'm just, you know, making stuff up because, frankly, it didn't feel that way to me. When you see, I mean, and there were probably, I'd say, seven or eight other people that had commented something and when you see a line of all these little hearts except for one and it's yours and it and it's you know it's not like we were all saying something special and different we most people said happy birthday to the pet or something about you know the, the birthday i mean anyway it still gets me worked up when i talk about it but because it's so new it's so fresh in my mind but Tell me, tell me that it's just me taking it the wrong way. Or would you have taken it that way? Would you have th seen that as a slight against you? And I just, I, I got out of Facebook. I didn't unfriend immediately or anything. I got out of Facebook and I thought about it. And I thought about it and I thought, it can't just be me. There's, there was the weird acting to start with there was the whole dinner comment and then there was this and I thought you know what I don't want this in my life if you're my friend and you have a problem with me talk to me about it that's what friends do to me in my opinion they tell you hey Claire you did this thing and it hurt my feelings. And I, and I thought about talking to her about this. I, I really, and I've talked to my mom, mom, if you're watching, thank you for <laughs> being here still to watch my video to, you know, you know what I mean? Um, cause mom, mom had to listen to me go on about this cause it really, really hurt my feelings. And I mean, part of me, I, I, I thought to myself, and here's the contradiction. Here's the paradox, I guess. Because part of me said, if she has a problem with me, she should come and talk to me and let me know what's going on. Yeah. The other part of me says, well, now you have a problem with her. And I feel like, I guess this is where this all comes in, is I feel like I have tried to talk to her. When I say, are you okay? Are we okay? That's an open invitation to say, well, actually, no, I feel like this has happened and whatever. I don't know what else to say. I don't, I'm not going to beg somebody to be my friend. I don't want to beg somebody to be my friend. I don't, I don't want to have to have that. I don't want to feed into whatever this is 
Like they want me to say, what's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. What's going on? What's wrong? I just, I don't have it in me anymore. My ex-husband hated when I did that. He absolutely hated it. And I understand why now, I think. <laughs> and it's because he didn't want that attention. He just wanted to think. He just wanted to, to figure it, to think about it. Or maybe there just wasn't anything wrong. So me just hounding and hounding and hounding doesn't do any good. It just makes people mad. So, um, and, and if there truly isn't anything wrong with this person, if this person didn't think, didn't have some problem with me, then I don't know. I just, I feel like a friend would have said, well, no, what makes you think that? Why would you think that? <laughs> And then why, and then also the top of the, the top of the chain of reasons that you you won't be my friend anymore is if you lie to me more than once to my face. And that's what happened in my opinion, because I think not, I don't think things are okay and I, they're not anymore. They're not okay anymore. And I feel like I'm just rambling at this point, but. I'm just curious about your thoughts on the situations that I've laid out. How would you have reacted? What would you have thought? Am I just am I just being um, overthinking it and and over analyzing things and and making it out to be something that it's completely not? Or do you would you have felt the same way? And would you? I mean, I trust my intuition. That's the thing. I trust it. I, my intuition has helped me in so many ways through the years. <laughs> And had I not listened to how I felt about something and had I not taken action on that feeling, I may not be here. I mean, there were a couple of times when I was a kid that I um, got my I, I got out of situations that I knew in my heart were not good situations. And I feel like because of that action, because of that intuition, I was able to, you know, get myself out of a bad situation and, and possibly keep it from getting worse. So today I really trust my intuition and if I feel like something's going on and plus it's kind of obvious to read the body language and to read the 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 tone of voice and and the 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 look in the person's eyes I mean that's not intuition that's just looking at somebody and realizing that something's not right. So that was a lot. I know it was a lot. I see it's been 30 minutes. Um what are your thoughts on this situation on being a friend? I mean, I, I now question my, I definitely don't want to get close to anybody else. I mean, I, I kind of feel like I, not only am I dating myself now, but I'm also friending myself now. <laughs> and again, I have friends that are out there that I love and adore and who have been extremely good to me and who, um, we've had our moments and stuff of, of not such a great time, but we've, we've talked about it and we've come to an understanding and, and we love each other and care about each other because we got stronger through those interactions. Um, you know who you are. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know what to do about it. I'm tired of getting my feelings hurt. I'm tired of feeling like I've done something wrong and I don't know what it is. <laughs> That's the worst. Um, you know, at least if I know what it is, I can either A, try to do something about it or B, say, you know what, you're right. I did do that and I suck and I'll, you know, I'm not going to bother you anymore. At least I can, I can do that, you know, but when you don't know what it is, that's just crazy. So. I don't know. I think I'm going to stop talking about it. I would love to hear your opinion on this topic in the comments section or make your own video talking about friends and your friendships and um, things like that. Um, hopefully it wasn't too much of a downer, <laughs> but I just had to get it out. I just had to talk about it. It's been weighing on me for a long time now. Uh, and you know, I, I'm trying to learn from it. I'm trying to learn from it. And I think that's all we can do is, you know, even if we have to separate ourselves from, from things for a while, is just try to learn from it and 
and try not to make the same mistakes again. Even if you don't know what the mistake is, maybe the mistake was just befriending a person who you shouldn't have befriended in the first place. I don't know. All right. Again, that's it. I hope you have a good day or good night wherever you are. I hope you had a safe and happy fourth if you celebrated and and or are in America. <laughs> you can celebrate it wherever you are, I suppose. Um, but I think that's it. Have a great have a great week. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.